I'm Stuart Gillespie, a Senior Research Fellow with the International Food Policy Research Institute and uh, currently a Visiting Fellow at IDS. I'm also the CEO of Transform Nutrition Research Programme Consortium, which is funded by DFID. Um, with a team uh, from IDS, IFPRI and the Micronutrient, Micronutrients Initiative, we've been working over the last several months on a paper for the New Lancet series uh, in nutrition. The, this is the second series in nutrition with Lancet. The first was in 2008 and it was very much focused on what is the nature of the problem of undernutrition, what are its pr primary driving uh, causes and determinants, what are the major consequences and uh, what are the core actions that are required to get to grips with some of these uh, uh, causes. The, this series uh, came about for several reasons. There's been a major push and interest in nutrition in recent years. I think this landscape, the landscape overall has shifted significantly. Uh, part of the reason for that was, was the, um, the food price spikes of 2007 and 2008 linked to issues such as climate change. Uh, also, the Lancet series itself in 2008 uh, really did shine a light on the problem of malnutrition. Um, we've also had a major new uh, initiative in the form of SUN, which is a scale-up nutrition movement, which is uh, a multi-stakeholder led by the UN, links in with 100 organisations globally, and is having, starting to have a major impact or major traction in its core countries. There are now 40 countries that have signed up to this movement. Um, so Sun has driven some of this momentum and, and, it's, and it's harnessing the, the momentum itself. The paper that we uh, decided to develop is really trying to focus on an area which has been largely neglected and that's the politics, the political economy of, of addressing, uh, of reducing malnutrition. If you go back and actually dig into the literature and look for key studies on the political economy of nutrition you can go back as far as 1970-1980 and there are some studies there that looked at multi-sectoral planning and then nothing much happened for 15 years. There was one book on the political economy and nutrition in the 90s until around 2003 and then it picked up again when there was a growing realisation that uh, the, the notion that nutrition somehow is, politically, uh, is apolitical is, is flawed completely. And part, a large part of the failure of the past has become so we've been fairly naive in the nutrition pr profession in terms of the politics of the issue. And we really need to shine a light on this. But more than that, get to grips with this in terms of understanding the structure of the issue, understanding the dynamics and pathways uh, through which policy is formulated and policies lead to improved programs and programs are implemented. Um, so our paper, we basically started by doing a quick literature review. We then sat down and decided how we were going to conceptualise the material that we have. And we decided upon, to cut a long story short, a six-cell six framework, uh, which basically looked at the core issues of three issues. Knowledge and evidence was one. And then the issues around governance would be the second. And the third was really looking at capacity and resources. And then we looked at what is needed to create and sustain momentum, number one, and what is needed to turn that momentum into impact on the ground. And therefore you come up with a six cell framework. If we're looking at knowledge and evidence, it is, it is not so much, it is not only uh, the knowledge of what is causing malnutrition and what we know about programs to address malnutrition. It's the way the knowledge is framed and the way the narratives are developed, the stories around change uh, are developed that can be extremely influential and there it's important again to be politically um, savvy and, or politically aware in terms of figuring out the right type of narrative in the right situation for the right person. For example, is it, uh, is it malnutrition as being an issue of child survival? Is it malnutrition as an issue of economic growth? or uh, the cognitive link with the brain development, uh, the right to food is another, which is the right narrative. That's one issue that we need to uh, address uh, when we look at the politics. And we give some examples of that in the paper. We need to know more about the, the benefits of addressing nutrition, and a lot has been done on that with the Copenhagen consensus uh, of 2008 and 2012. So we do know how incredibly powerful nutrition is 
as a driver of development and, and of economic growth. Um, we need to uh, also know more about what works, and again that is in the Lancet series as well. But these are the types of evidence, the way the ev evidence is packaged and the way the evidence is communicated is key. Second, when we talk about governance and when we're talking about creating momentum, we really need to be we really need to uh, understand what's required to, to incentivize and to enable action across different sectors. Many sectors need to be engaged in a broad-based way with, with combating malnutrition. Agriculture, social protection, water, sanitation, uh, education uh, and health, obviously. How to understand the, the leverage points, the entry points, the incentives to enable those sectors to, to come on board, to, to look at win-win solutions so that they don't see nutrition as a, a drain on their time or their resources, but it's a positive. And there are many examples, and we've, we've documented examples where uh, the benefits of addressing nutrition with health can have positive win-win effects. So that's horizontal coordination across sectors, if you like. Um, there are also other issues with regard to accountability and using uh, data to um, hold governments to account for their actions or their failure to act uh, with regard to undernutrition. Better data, better access to data, better understanding on the part of, of, of the public in terms of what nutrition is doing are, are all key. Um, and IDS have actually recently developed the Nutrition Commitment Index, which is an, an excellent tool with great potential for showing uh, levels and types of commitment to addressing undernutrition on the part of governments. And that is already having a certain impact. And countries always want to know where they're ranked in these things. And there is a pretty solid uh, basis behind the, the, the way the index has been uh, developed, which, which is clear too. So if we also look Within all this, there are certain roles for the NGO community, there are certain roles for private sector. We talk a lot about private sector in our paper. Um, that has, there have been real battle lines with regard to private sector engagement in nutrition in the past, largely around continued violations of the breast milk um, substitute uh, code. And uh, infant feeding in general has been a battleground really between private sector and public sector on nutrition. That still exists. There's still a need to build trust on the part of the private sector to, to engage uh, with, with the public sector and with NGOs uh, on nutrition. There is uh, signs of change. We need more evidence to show the positives of engagement. Perhaps it's, there are op opportunities outside of the, the, the 6 to 24 month age group for private sector to engage uh, effectively. Clearly fortification is one. The whole value chain discussion there are opportunities, but there's a need for trust building. Uh, we, we clearly uh, state in that paper um, that there there's a need for understanding where the bottlenecks are that exist that private sector could help in nutrition, what type of regulatory systems are in place or need to be put in place, uh, and, and so on. The third area that we talk about beyond politics and governments is capacity and financing. They both uh, merge together, but capacity has been the elephant in the room in many in many cases in these discussions. It's usually the number one cited excuse for failure uh, because we don't have enough capacity. Capacity was not adequate to to implement the programs or, or, or to monitor results, and, and that's just simply not enough. We need to be more structured in the way we look at capacity, in the way we assess capacity, capacity gaps, capacity weaknesses. That could be at the individual level. It can be at an organisational level, and it will certainly also be at a systemic level in terms of uh, um, institutions and the way institutions are configured within the country and how they interact with each other. That's, that's what we call a systemic uh, level. Those three levels of capacity need to be assessed clearly within countries, and ultimately there's no way, I believe and we believe in terms of high-burden countries, there's no way of avoiding the need for a major investment over 10 years plus in capacity strengthening uh, as being a core for the future. And then there's a the whole issue of financing. Uh, we will be hearing in the G8 or in the pre-G8 Hunger Summit uh, this week 
of pledges made, commitments made, financial commitments to address undernutrition. And the series itself talks about $9.6 billion being needed per year um, to fully address the, the burden of undernutrition and of which around three to four billion will be required per year uh, from the external sources such as donors. Uh, there are innovative opportunities for raising those um, type of finances and we discuss, discuss a few uh, in the paper such as nutrition impact bonds, um, different forms of uh, taxation, uh, other opportunities which have been used, air, air ticket levies etc. that have been tried out in different other social uh, environments. Um, so we've put together the evidence, we've, we've, we've intermixed, if you like, the evidence uh, with recommendations or identifications of gaps where we feel more uh, evidence is required to push this forward, uh, clear evidence to suggest that we, we need to um, go forward on um, a range of activities, we, uh, including especially implementation research when it comes to delivery, not just building the momentum, but turning that momentum into impact. Implementation research, understanding what the uh, roadblocks are within programs, better monitoring, better evaluation, uh, to, to show what can be done with uh, effective use of resources um, through programs. Uh, the, the research uh, priorities of the past have tended to be skewed far too much to issues of causes of undernutrition consequences. A lot has been learned there, but now we're in, a, we're in an environment where we need to let, know a lot more about what works, not only what works on a small scale, but much more importantly on a large scale, and how to get to that large scale without losing uh, the quality and the intensity that made that program work on a small scale. So that's an issue, a researchable issue that we, we, we address too. One of the final things that we mentioned in our paper is that we have largely focused on undernutrition um, because it is still a major issue, it's a major uh, underlying cause of child death, it's a major drain on development, human development, economic development, all the reasons that have been clearly specified in the other papers in this series. But there is a, another type of shift in the landscape and that's in terms of the nature of the problems itself. Undernutrition is coming down, not very quickly, some areas faster than others, some countries faster than others. But the issue of uh, uh, overweight and obesity is, is picking up and becoming a major issue throughout the developing world and the, of course the developed world, uh, which needs to be um, focused on. And we talk about the issue to a certain extent, we don't really in this particular series, focus on it um, significantly in a way that will need to be done in the future. But we, flag, we, we signpost it, we flag the issue as, as a major uh, growing issue. The, the notion of double burden of, of, of malnutrition clearly has been discussed for many years, but the, the reality is here and uh, that'll be something for the future.